press conference for the Ole Miss Rebels. Ole Miss's sports information director is Madeline Marshall. Tonight we're joined by head coach Yolette McPhee McEwen and student athletes Angel Baker and Madison Scott. Coach McPhee McEwen, your opening statement. First of all, just incredibly grateful. Um, <clears throat> I have a lot of mentors in my life and one of my mentors um, would always say to me um, that the person with the experience is, is, is at the mercy of the one with the anointing. And uh, he spoke that over my life maybe like 10 years ago. Um, and so to be in this situation right now, uh, to take down an historical program like Stanford, uh, a coach and a woman that I admire and I've watched um, is incredible. And I'm incredibly grateful to be in this position and um, look forward to, I told, I told my team like, I just love them so much. I don't want to stop having this feeling. So who knows, maybe we end up in Dallas. But right now, at least we know we punched our ticket to Sweet 16. So grateful. We'll now take questions for the student athletes. As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation at the beginning of each question. If you're on the Zoom call and you have a question there, please use the raise hand function, and I will call on you if we have time for your questions. First one here is up front. Michael Robertson, African-American athlete. So uh, Madison or Angel, uh, when you guys took the court, you went up against, a, as she said, historically great team and uh, a team that was hoping to get back to the Final Four. So you guys led the entire time and only had three ties, never lost the lead. So what gave you guys that much confidence? To start off just walking in, knowing who we are, um, we've been battle tested all year. We've fallen short. Um, and it was finally our time to step into that moment and come out on top. I feel like we walked in with confidence and we, we knew who we were from the jump. Um, what she said, you know, um, our God is so good. Um, and and he, he, he's been with us every step of the way, you know. Um, when, when he's with us, we know, we know we won't fail, you know. So today we just, we came out and uh, we were together for 40 minutes and uh, we came up with the W. So we're just grateful. And like Coach O said, we're going to keep going. Matthew Walter from the Next. You guys talked about you pack your defense. And even Stanford admitted they knew you guys said that you pack your defense. And you lose that lead in the fourth quarter. It's tie game. You force three straight turnovers on three straight possessions. Just talk about trusting that defensive mentality, even when Stanford made that run to cut it, you know, to tie the game and you could have easily just let it, let it go, but you kept playing hard on the defensive end and forcing those turnovers that really clinched the game for you guys. We defend, uh, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, I feel like we had great leadership in Maya Taylor, um, but we, we, we defend and we was confident Happened to go down and defend and get some stops. Uh, ben Parker, CardinalSportsReport.com. First of all, congratulations on the win. Um, Thank you. Yeah, big time for you guys. Um, just talk about one of the things you guys, both of you collectively did really well was you guys knocked down your free throws. Um, just talk about what the key is to making your free throws. Uh, a, just in the NCAA tournament with the pressure of that, and then B, in a, in a hostile road environment. So what's the key to maintaining your composure and knocking those down? Uh, well, first, you know, coach told us from the jump, you know, uh, we had to knock down our free throws. You know, we may not get many of them, you know, but she told us when we got to the line to, um, you know, be composed and knock them down. You know, that's key on the road. You know, an environment like this, the fans going crazy. Um, we wanted to win. You know, we didn't want to go home. So we wanted to make sure that we knocked down our free throws, dialed in. And it's just the work that we've been putting in. You know, before we left, we were in Oxford. We were shooting free throws every day before practice, after practice. You know, the work shows. So it's just a testament to how hard we work. And, yeah. A quick reminder that the Ole Miss locker room is still open at this time. Cheryl Coward, Hoofy.com. Uh, for the players, this is not just a historic uh, moment in terms of uh, women's basketball, but for the state of uh, Mississippi as well, given the history of Ole Miss, you have a black female coach. I mean, even at, you know, just 40 years ago, some of these things were unheard of because of all the things that have gone on in the South. What does it mean for you to have a leader like this, a black woman leader, 
in a place where you couldn't even walk on campus in our life, in my lifetime, not yours. <laughs> Well, it means a lot. Um, one of the reasons why I came to Ole Miss is because I wanted to be under a coach that looked like me. Um, I feel like Coach Joe really just is a believer, a fighter, and um, that's who some, somebody I want to represent. Um, we try our best to <laughs> be, uh, resemble her on the court with a lot of passion, just toughness. So it means a lot. I feel like she, did, ha she had done a, a great job with this program, and uh, I'm proud of you, Coach. Take some questions from Zoom. Let's start with David. David, Hello. go ahead. <laughs> can I can I can I respond oh, to that question? Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna start with saying I love you, Coach. You know, um, she pushes us every single day. You know, to be great. You know, um, like like Angel said. You know, her toughness, her resilience. You know, everything that Coach Joe has been through and goes through, and she always comes out on top. You know, that's what she's instilled in her players. You know, she she lets us know every day, don't give up. You know, don't stop. You know. Even, even in a game like today when nobody thought we could, we could play in this game with Stanford, nobody thought we could win, but she believed in us, and she instilled that in us. So we went out there, and, and, and having a coach that believes in you, you know, and, and, and pushes you to be great every single day, you know, we went out there and gave it everything we had, you know, for her, you know, for us, for all the hard work that we put in. So to answer your question, you know, it's amazing to be coached by a woman like Coach Joe. You know, this is just the beginning. She's not done, and I'm excited to be here and just excited for the opportunity to be coached by her. Okay, David, go ahead. Sorry, David. Um, for David Eckert, the Clarion Ledger. Um, for, for both of y'all, I mean, you've been so close to this kind of win a couple of times this year. I mean, did, did LSU and South Carolina, did, did that pop into your, your head at all down the stretch where, you know, maybe you're in a timeout huddle or whatever? Um, were you thinking about those experiences at all and, and what you could, you could bring from those? Uh, definitely. Um, you know, we fell short a lot of games this year that, that we felt like we should have won. You know, um, we didn't play, you know, Ole Miss women's basketball for 40 minutes, you know, so that was our goal coming in. Uh, we wanted to be tough and be together for the entire 40 minutes, you know, and play defense at a high level, communicate at a, lot, at a high level, and, and do what we came here to do, you know, get a win. So definitely those games, you know, falling short and hurt in the moment, but ultimately prepared us for this moment. You know, we finally closed out a game, and uh, – we're just hungry for more. We're hungry to keep playing some games. Let's go back to Zoom. Ga uh, uh, Gabriella, Gabriella, go ahead. Gabriella Lewis, the next. Um, Y'all touched on this a little bit, uh, but and Coach said this on the broadcast at the end. But there were moments there at the end where you know maybe you hadn't been there before, and Maya was was really encouraging the team, and you ended up executing on defense so hard. So can you just walk me through that those final minutes? Um, and also, if you know what Maya maybe said. Uh, Maya is is a great leader. Um, in those closing minutes, she was just saying it's not over until until the buzzer is off. Um, but she also in the huddle, she was just telling us telling us to stay together. And uh, I feel like she she played a major role. She might not have scored the most points or uh, whatever, but her leadership was superior, like literally. And uh, I don't think we could have did it without her. We'll take one more from Zoom and then have perhaps we'll have one more here in the room. Michael. Michael, go ahead. Hey, Madison. Uh, Michael Katz from the uh, Daily Journal. You, you, commit, you and Snow both committed to this program when they were coming off an 0 16 SEC moment. What, what uh, uh, SEC uh, record? What is this moment like for you? You, you got the opportunity to, to hit free throws that put you guys ahead. What is it like seeing that your belief in, in Yo and this program paid off? Uh, the, the, the feeling I'm feeling right now, you know, is, is indescribable. You know, all I can say is I'm just so happy. Um, I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just happy to be an old Miss Rebel. You know, this, this is what I came here for. This is what me and Snutter came here for, for moments like this, you know. Um, each year, you know, I've said it before, we continue to get better and better, you know, under the leadership of Coach Yoke. You know, we have uh, amazing scorers like A.B., you know, that come <laughs> and join us, you know, and, and, and so forth and so forth. Like, you know, we, hmm, we, we've come a long way, you know, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just so happy. Uh, that's all I can say. I'm just so happy. And, again, you know, I keep saying it because, you know, I believe it. We all believe it. We're not done. You know, there's still more work to be done. So, I mean, let's do it. Take one or two more here in the room for the student athletes. 
Uh, ben Parker, CarnivoreSportsReport.com. Uh, you guys held them to two of seven shooting from three-point range. Uh, just what was the key to your perimeter defense and locking the, in on that side of things? <laughs> I feel like I keep repeating myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we just take pride on, on a defensive end. Uh, we definitely dictate and we disrupt. Um, we knew that they were going to try to get some threes off, so we just try to lock in on that and make it a hard time for them. Okay, Madison, Angel, thank you. You're free to rejoin your teammates in the locker room. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. We'll take questions now for Coach McPhee McEwen. As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation at the beginning of each question. If you're on the Zoom call and have a question, please use the raise hand function, and I'll call on you if we have time for your questions. Let's start here up front. Okay, Coach, uh, Michael Robertson, African-American athlete. Um, so the shooting, 30% uh, for you guys and like 32, 33 for them. How do you win a game like that against a team of this ilk? And um, what was the feeling that went through your mind knowing that how much you respect Tyra when the buzzer went off? It was an incredible amount of emotion for me, I'll tell you that. Immediately, <clears throat> I was just overwhelmed with gratitude and just hugged my staff because we put in so much work, you know? Uh, our players show up and they do the job and they execute the game plan, but my coaches and my support staff, like we burn the midnight oil. And so it was just an incredible amount of, uh, of emotion. Uh, as far as us not shooting well, we knew that uh, Stanford's size and length would be a little problematic for us. Um, and, but we also know that we defend. And, uh, and that's why we can't explain it. Like people, you know, I, I know a lot of people talk about, oh, Ole Miss is aggressive, but they don't give enough credit to how disciplined we are defensively, um, especially when we lock in. And honestly, when I realized that we had to get a stop to win the game, I had far more peace than having the score <laughs> on the other end to win the game because that's who we are. So we've won tons of games by having to get a stop, and our team just felt like we could do it. Coach right here, Matthew Walter with the next. I want to ask you about your journey, right? You started your career as a community college player, spent a lot of time as an assistant coach, right. and you go to Jacksonville, a small school in the Atlantic Sun. Just how much did all of that prepare you for this moment and this game to coach against Tara and win this kind of game to get yourself to the Sweet 16 for the first time for your program in, in 15 plus mm -hmm. years? Um, it, 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 I'm on Twitter, I'm active on Twitter. And uh, let me tell you how like my faith works. This morning when I woke up, I drafted the tweet. I was gonna tweet after the end of the game because I knew I would be full of emotion and I needed to get my thoughts together. In the tweet, it states that my parents, uh, Carl Semesco, the head coach of Florida Gulf Coast, Lynn Bria, the head coach at Stetson, Jose Fernandez, the head coach at South Florida, and all of the Southeastern coaches, my husband, have prepared me for this moment. And that was on my heart. And so my whole journey, I tell people, I always use like basketball analogies. And I say, for my life, y'all, I never get a wide open layup. I always have to do a pro hop or a Euro step <laughs> to score in life. It's just been my journey. And so anytime it's easy, it's a setup for failure, you know? So, uh, but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a learner, I'm a student, and every stop I've learned something from Frank, Frank Phillips Community College to Miami Dade, shout out to Susan Summons, who taught me how to put belief into her players, um, to, man, Bo Pearman, that was incredibly tough as a coach, so taught me how to be resilient. Uh, the list goes on and on of people that have impacted my life 
and that are responsible for me being right here, right now. Quick reminder that the Ole Miss locker room closes at five after the hour. Hi, Yola. Janie McCauley hey, Janie. from AP. Yeah. Um, following up on that, I mean, I spent some time with your, your girls and your parents before tip-off, and you ran out, your team came out on the court, and, and Yasmin said, that's my mom. And uh, they were dancing, and the example you talked about yesterday, wanting to be the future of women's basketball and a future for th these kids are seeing, and your dad's fighting tears. I mean, just how much yeah. does that mean to you to be showing your, your young daughters that, hey, this is, this is what you can do when you chase your yeah. dreams? <sighs> well, you really can't be what you can't see. And I really believe that. And so my daughters are learning how to be strong and, and, uh, and go after dreams, and, but also how to be you know, a wife and uh, how to balance. You know, I, I cry in front of my kids. Had we lost, my 10-year-old would have cried tonight. Uh, my five-year-old is just living the dream right now. But my 10-year-old? she would have been an emotional wreck. And um, <clears throat> everybody asks me where I get my passion from. And I'll tell this story over and over again. My dad lost in a championship game. The gym cleared out and he cried. And I was Yasmin's age, my 10 year old's age. And I remember walking over and crying with him. That's when I learned passion and love for the game. And so my daughter is the same way. And I don't care if she doesn't coach, but what she is learning, what they are learning, is let's normalize women in leadership. Uh, they're watching my players. You know, they're seeing Coach Chris, Coach Boyan, Coach P um, treat me in a respectful manner. I mean, it's just really good society work, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, because really that's how it should be, where we all love and respect each other. And so I wouldn't have this, I wouldn't want to do this without them being here, little Chris being here. Uh, in our, in our <clears throat> gym, there's little kids running all over the place. <laughs> so uh, they're all getting a chance to see us do something special. My dad. Yeah, and then he talked all that smack, talking about he don't cry because he don't lose a lot. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, my parents are here, super emotional. Kurt Streeter from the New York Times. Quick uh, two-parter, actually. I couldn't quite tell, were you crying after the game? Yeah, oh, yeah. shoot, yeah. I, was a, awesome. I, I was a mess. <laughs> yeah, joy, was joy, tears of joy, tears of just... Just humility, you know, like, come on, everyone has a, had a dream coming up. And when you're coaching, I'm a dreamer, you know, and I try to be a dream merchant for my players. But, like, how cool is it to take down someone that you admire? Like, that was pretty freaking cool. Because um, I admire Tara, you know, so I'll never forget this. Second, second little question here. The, this kind of upset does not happen often in the women's game. What That's does right. this say about the depth, the growing depth uh, in, in your game? It's, it says a lot, and, and you're so right, and that's what I was telling the team. I said, fairly, FDU went and beat Purdue. Like, we got to normalize that for the women's game. And I said, a lot of times, women, this doesn't happen because – uh, as females, we're taught to hone it in. You know what I'm saying? Because I get attacked all the time. Oh, I'm too bold. I'm too bracing. I'm too this. I'm too that. But the coach from Fairleigh Dickinson said on TV that he was going to beat Purdue. And they did it. And so we need to normalize women being competitive and having dreams and having and goals and wanting to win, you get what I'm saying? And so 
I think this is good for the game. The Southeastern Conference is full of personalities. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, we want to fit right into that, you know? So, and I, and I know that my, one of my staff members asked you what you were doing here. And I'm telling you, we speak things into existence. So I'm looking forward to seeing that right up. Uh, ben Parker, CardinalSportsReport.com. First of all, congratulations. Thank I'm you. I'm very happy to hear your story and everything. Um, just as a coach, what's the key to keeping your – I mean, obviously, this is a huge yeah. monumental win and a lot of emotion and everything, but how do you find a way to find, a, find an appropriate place for that yeah. emotion but still keep your team locked in and focused and, hey, we're not done yet, and mm -hmm. how do you not – get too high from this as you head into Seattle is my question. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll have tomorrow off. And I'm a right now type person because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So we're about to party like it's 1999 tonight. <laughs> and then tomorrow we'll party again. And then we'll all watch uh, Texas and Louisville uh, together to see who we're going to play. And then we'll get right back to work. When we win, we party. Um, and then we let it go. And so I think they deserve that. And, uh, and honestly, I really felt like if we could get over this hump, beating the number one team, we've faced the number one team in the country and come up short. And uh, I felt like if we could get over this, boy, it's no telling what we can do we can do so we're gonna be ready to roll we want to keep winning because we know if we lose we go home so you know I got to get an email together for my kids send it to their principals and say see you when I see you because we're going to Seattle <laughs> we'll take another one here in the room and then I'm gonna try to get a few of these zoom yeah. questions in so go ahead I got all night Cheryl Coward <laughs> hoopfeet.com uh, congrats, Coach. You may have Thank to explain you. that 1999 reference to your players. <laughs> they weren't born yet. Um, I talked to the bus drivers that drove you all, you all around all week, the three bus drivers. Um, and then John Quill Jones is on Twitter already dancing. <laughs> That's um, my girl. <laughs> um, and it seems like everywhere you go, you kind of have these people following behind you, kind of like the, the, the Pied Piper of Hamlet, <laughs> if you know that, know that story. What is it about your personality <clears throat> that uh, attracts people like that? And how is that... Um, kind of dovetailed into your coaching style? Well, I think everyone loves um, a story that they can relate to. You know, I didn't play on Team USA. Uh, I didn't play for the great late Pat Summit. Um, Gino didn't endorse me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I really got it out the mud. Y'all, I'm an immigrant. Um, I migrated from the Bahamas and came over here and started at the junior college ranks and worked my way up. You know how I got this job at Ole Miss? I called Ole Miss and said, what are you guys doing? I'm hot <laughs> and y'all could get me for cheap. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm recruiting my butt off with a $20,000 recruiting dollar recruiting budget. Give me yours and watch what I do. So I've always been bold. And, uh, and I also share my story with a lot of people. Like I'm on social media. Like that's me tweeting. And so people feel like they can be a part of it. And so this is their journey because I let them in. And I think that's what makes it special. And then... The Bahamian people, like, we just love a lot. Like, we're joyful people. Come on, we live on a beach, an island. Like, what's to be upset about, you know? Um, and so we're just joyful people, and we try to spread it. And then lastly, you know, I'm a Christian, a person of faith. And one of the things that uh, we have a lot of Christians on our team, and so... They always challenge me. My, my Christian mentors tell me, people need to see God through you. And God is love, in my opinion. And my faith says that. So anybody who I touch, I want them to feel love. <laughs> I, 
that's for another conversation. <laughs> Okay, let me try to get through a few of these uh, Zoom questions. And by the way, I know to our audio folks, I've lost my internet connection. But I do remember, I believe we have John Sokoloff, if we can get him in. Let's go, John. Hey, yo, uh, congrats. You, you kind of mentioned there the, the <laughs> humility kind of deal that you felt right when, you know, everything ended tonight. But, I mean, the last four years... <laughs> There's been progress kind of each year with the program from the 0-16 SEC year to now, like you kind of mentioned. But knowing that all that kind of built up, keeping that in mind, what was that moment like right when kind of the buzzer sounded and everything started to at least like set in a little bit? Can you try to kind of encapsulate some of those emotions? I mean, I shoot, I just cried. Uh, three seconds left, my team was celebrating. I was looking at them like, lock in, lock in, <laughs> focus. This thing can go any way. Um, but they just felt it at the 16 second mark. They was like, it's over. And I was able to keep my composure. And when the buzzer sound, um, I just cried. Right before the game, I talked to a good friend of mine. And I said, what people don't know about me, y'all, like, I've won big games. You know, like, <sighs> I could remember from like even being a hooper in high school, winning big games, beating Carl Semesco. They were the juggernauts. For seven years, no one had beat Florida Gulf Coast at Florida Gulf Coast until Coach Yo showed up. No one had beat Jamaica in the CBC until my team beat Jamaica. Uh, I've won big games, you know? So, and I just kept telling one of my friends, like, I'm due for a big game. <laughs> and so this was cool. It was super cool. Let's take Adam Brown. Adam, go ahead with your question. Hey, uh, Adam Brown, how you talking about? Hey, Adam. Uh, hey, congratulations. Can you talk about this to play a top 10 tonight and this how she was locked in with the three three she had. Who who which player are you talking about? Uh Thompson. Oh, oh my God. Our freshman. How about that? Our freshman is just stone cold, man. I would say something else, but I'm trying to keep it professional. Uh Ayana is from DeSoto High School. They're champions. They're winners. And when we recruited her, we wanted to bring someone from a championship pedigree program. And she was just waiting for a moment, and we were really nervous before the NCAA tournament because she had twisted her ankle. She didn't even play in the SEC tournament. Um, and, when, and when she looked at me and she said, Coach, I'm going to be playing, I, I played it cool, but I was jumping for joy because she was the X factor for us in both games. So really excited about her. Future is super bright. Okay, we're up against it here time-wise, so just time for one more overall question. Let's go to David. David, go ahead. Hey, Coach, congrats. Thanks, um, I guess, you know, you're talking about you felt like you were a due for a big one. Um, was there a point where you could kind of identify, you know, you've, you've played – outstanding teams this season already before obviously was there a point where you could kind of say this feels different this feels like we we might get this one um while you were on the sidelines tonight honestly I felt that way as we were preparing for Stanford um this is going to sound funny but like I understand the legacies that, that Stanford holds my players like the games are on so late they really get to see, to see Stanford. So, like, they weren't intimidated. You get what I'm saying? Like, on the, on the Central Time, East Coast, we get to see those teams all the time. And so that there's an intimidating factor when you play a South Carolina, a Tennessee, a LSU. But Stanford's on the West Coast, so, like, they don't really know how historic – this program is. And so I didn't spend any ounce of any time trying to convince them that they could play 
with Stanford when they just took South Carolina in the overtime. So as they were prepping, they just locked in. They looked at me and they said, Coach, whatever you say we're going to do. Team 48, man, wild group, really happy for them. Coach, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Safe travels. Thank you all for attending tonight. Transcripts will be available shortly. And thank you for being here with us tonight.